All right, Nurse Taylor, we are being streamed live. <laughs> Welcome to Perpetual Motion with Dr. Mo Anderson. So excited to have you. I'm excited, Dr. Anderson. Thank you for having me. Uh, we are friends and I recently went over to visit your residual health center there in Arlington, Texas, and I was so impressed with what you're doing. Thank you for inviting me over and showing me around. And we talked about so many different services. And I realized that outside of Instagram, I know very little about what's going on in the world of <laughs> spa treatments and uh, body treatments and tattoo removal. And you have expertise in these things because you've got an amazing background in healthcare. So tell everybody a little bit about your background in uh, nursing. Well, I have over 24 years of healthcare experience. Um, I really started at the beginning. I started at the front desk. I was trained uh, by a local doctor in Waller when I was at Prairie View doing my summer jobs. And he trained me on how to be a medical assistant back then. And, you know, I'm not going to say my age, but back then, you know, you didn't need formal school. It was on the job training. <laughs> right, right. Right. And as the years have gone on, I've gone back to school several times to do working in nursing, going back for a respiratory care practitioner, going through school again to become a holistic health practitioner. Um, I've also spent 11 years teaching healthcare. I've taught medical assistants, pharmacy techs, LVNs, all here in the local DFW area, um, director of a school program and urgent care, ER, ICU, name it, I've kind of done it. That's an amazing background, well-rounded, covers everything. And it, uh, you know, speaks to you being a nurturing person, a, a caregiver, because I know that you're married and have wonderful kids as well, high school and college age. I'm, I'm a busy woman, so it takes a lot to impress me with your schedule. But I am impressed by your by your uh, schedule and your stamina. It's and I think too that as we talk about the uh, treatments and services that are being offered at spas all over the country, that you can give us some clues on how you know those things can help us. I think a lot of things we might be looking at as being just cosmetic or even vanity really have some uh, health and wellness benefits for us. So you've been working with teams, it sounds like, for a long time, and you've got a, a great background in healthcare. You could have gone into teaching. You could have gone into pharmacy if you didn't want to do what you were doing anymore. What made you decide to start your own business and this type of business in particular? Well, I wanted people to understand, like you said, this is not about vanity. This is about whole body wellness to me. And I believe not only do you feel good on the inside, people like to feel good on the outside, right? And right. it doesn't mean that you have to go under the knife every five seconds. You can do something as simple as a facial, you know, relieve some of the stress, do a nice temporal massage, get rid of some dead skin to kind of help you relax. It doesn't always have to be cosmetic surgery. You can do other things Got to it. help you feel good and start your face. Absolutely. Hydration is the big one that I've learned about the hard way as well. So you gone into this business and I, I know I was kind of surprised when you told me that you were doing it owner operator because I thought a physician had to be on site, but you explained to me what the rules are around that because I think a lot of people avoid it as well because they're thinking is that legal? Can they do that? We're just, I mean, not sure nothing about the people personally, but just not sure about the rules around this because so many things just kind of pop up. And then you find out later people weren't licensed, they weren't operating within their scope of care and all of that. So how does this work that you can do these types of services in your business? Well, for one, everyone needs to do due diligence. Now, just because you research things and it's okay for today, it doesn't mean that the legislation is gonna change two weeks from now or a month from now. You have to do your, your research and make sure. But here in the state of Texas, if you are not an MD or a DO, that does not negate you or stop you from opening up your own med spa. What you do have to have, on the other hand, is an off-site medical director, meaning you have to have an MD 
a DO, you can do a nurse practitioner, you can do a PA, but they have to be licensed in the state of Texas if you okay. are not in healthcare yourself. All right, that makes sense. That makes sense. What, um, how did you decide what services you can offer? Is there a list and you kind of chose from ones that are legally allowed? Do you do everything or, or how did you decide which services to offer in your practice? Well, in my practice, I looked at my scope. What am I allowed to do on my own? And this is before I brought on a medical director. So I was already doing wound care as a traveling nurse. I've gone back and forth to hospitals down in uh, Austin where I've done care as a contract worker. So I've been employed throughout the Metroplex and throughout Texas as a contract worker where I'm working under my scope. Got if it. you go to the Texas Medical Board and you put in your profession, it does give you a list of what you can and cannot do. If you go to the Texas Medical Board and say, oh, I wanna inject Botox or I wanna give facials. Mm -hmm. The Texas Medical Board is gonna put it right there on their website and tell you exactly who can and cannot do certain procedures. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I just wanted to get that out of the way because I, I just I know that's a, lot, a question a lot of people have more cautious among us. Other people just jumped in head first and then you know, <laughs> worry about that later. Let the courts work it out. But I, I wanted right. to establish that, you know, you are legally practicing within your scope with doing the services that we're going to talk about. And I, I was checking out your Facebook page. You have a lot of five-star ratings from very, very happy people. And I see, you know, I looked at several different spa boutiques and spa resorts and different places. And it seems like overall, people are very, very satisfied with the quality of care that they get and just to be able to indulge in, in self-care because it falls in there as well to me. Yes, so yes. cool. What I want to do is just, let's just walk through some of these procedures and talk about the benefits of them, regardless of who does them, how people can benefit from them. So you mentioned uh, facials and something about dead skin. And I'm just going to throw some of my own experiences in here <laughs> as well, because that's what I do. <laughs> and, uh, I had a facial one time. And that's another thing that I think keeps people away from getting treatment is just fear of, of reactions and side effects and things like that. So I had a facial nurse, Taylor, nurse T. And my face broke all out. It felt like I was burning and stuff. I think, I think they were trying to work on acne or something with me. I don't, I don't know what happened, but talk to us about, again, about the benefits of facial, but also how you avoid getting into having some type of allergic reaction, because that really scared me. Yes. Okay. So once again, it goes back to due diligence. Um, you have to make sure that the facility that you're going to, that they're using hypoallergenic products. Um, here at Residual okay. Health Center, we use all natural products. We don't use any chemicals whatsoever. So if you're allergic to a food product, of course, we'd ask that question, make sure we're not using anything on you. But at other spas, sometimes they use um, more of a chemical peel type facial, or they're using yeah. instruments like a, a microdermabrasion wand which does more scraping. Um, and it all goes by. You need to make sure when you're having your facials that you are completely honest. I have sensitive skin. I have this. So they know what products they can and cannot use on you. Right. So is that is that part of a health history or is that just part of the conversation with the, with the person treating you? It should be a part of the conversation before any treatment at a med spa, you're supposed to have what we call a consultation with the person that will be performing the treatment. And they should have a list or a check-in where they ask series of questions. Um, in healthcare, we, we do assessments, right? It's right. be assessments for us. Um, but for non-medical people, maybe an esthetician, they do have forms that they fill out where they're supposed to ask you several questions yeah. to guide them on what they're going to do. I got you. And she's saying, for those of you who don't know me, I just realized I failed to introduce myself. I'm uh, Dr. Mo Anderson. I am a licensed doctor of dental surgery, author, speaker, podcast host. And if you're watching on uh, Dr. Monica Anderson's page, my official page, then that's my page. And you can check back later and learn more about me. But today, today, I'm so excited. We have Nurse Taylor, an RN with two decades of experience who now has her own holistic health center, re residual health health center. 
And, I, you know, uh, and also I want to point out, normally I have water just because I don't want people to think that, you know, this is bourbon or, or whiskey or something. I wish this is tea. <laughs> when, I, when I held it up early, I was like, oh, let me clarify what we're having. This is why we normally drink water. However, I need a little boost here because it's been a long day, but I'm very hyped up now. Okay, next procedure. As a dentist, this is not something that I've had. Uh, an opportunity or a reason to do hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Now, I think Michael Jackson, when I hear that, but tell me about that. Why on earth would anyone get that done? Okay, so scratch the MJ theory. Yes, okay. he has it back in the day, but that's not what we're using it for. So All right. some of the med spas or centers that are out there, unlike mine here at Residual Health Center, I do post-op care or wound care. Now, if you have a slow healing wound, or maybe you've had cosmetic surgery and you're a diabetic, or maybe it just, you know, is not looking quite right, maybe the onset of an infection, hyperbaric therapy chamber can help you so much. It uses infused oxygen that forces into the interstitial lining. Well, let's just say in between the outside of your skin and your muscles, so everybody can understand what I'm talking about. Okay. And it basically forces oxygen rich plasma to help you heal faster that's all it is it's a way for you to heal faster with oxygen that's excellent and there's so many uh, uh, uh diabetics come to mind when you talk about slow wound healing but i know there are other reasons immunocompromised or medications yes. or whatever might have happened so that's good to know that that's an alternative is that something that they do in hospitals as well or no, they have outpatient centers. There's uh, several centers here in Arlington. They're all over the Metroplex and they take insurance or cash pay. So it's something that's feasible for everyone. Okay. But what you're saying is you don't have to go to an outpatient center now. There are other options or do people have to be referred to a center like yours? Uh, you don't have to be referred to. You can call and schedule your own appointments as well as the hyperbaric chamber places as well. You can just call them. There's a nurse on duty and they're going to ask you a little questions and then they'll go from there to see what your best line of treatment is. Okay. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Um, body sculpting. And, and I've seen for some reason, I, somebody's doing some good marketing because cool body sculpting is coming to mind. I don't know. Do they have hot body sculpting and, and it's cool and warm? I don't like either extreme, but <laughs> what and where are you just freezing some fat into place? What's going on? What's going okay. on? <laughs> so, cool sculpting. Yes, there is body sculpting. It can be done with heat okay. and ice, right? So right. one that's been around for a very long time is the cool sculpting machine. And basically it uses vacuum therapy to pull into the device at least one inch of fat or loose skin that you have. And the machine can go down to negative 15 degrees. And what it's going to do is freeze the fat cells, right? And literally it's like a rock, it's done when you're, after you take off the machine. And then we take a warm uh, modality device, a uh, heat wand right. with your hands and we massage and break that pocket down. When the pocket breaks down, wow. you're going to go home and drink lots and lots of water. And guess what? Your lymphatic system is going to kick in. It's going to pull that fat that just broke down into the lymphatic system. And then you're going to pee it out. Simple, wow. right? Uh, physiologically, I don't know if that is simple, <laughs> but the way you describe it, it sounds uh, simple. Now, is that in addition to working out, or do people not have to work out anymore? You just do this sculpting? No, I don't want people to think I can just lay on the table and you can freeze my whole body and I don't have to do anything. No. Okay. Darn it. That's not how it's going to go. We got to do a little extra, okay? Okay. So if you I do want people to work out three to four times a week. And then when I say work out, I want a brisk walk, 30 minutes, easy peasy, right? And you also have to remember any of these non-surgical procedures take time. It only reduces the area that is treated mm -hmm. up to 20 to 30% with every treatment. So you're not going to lose hundred percent of your fat in that one area. It's okay. 20 to 30% with every single treatment that you have in that area. And you have to treat, you know, we don't have just like this little roll, right? A lot right. of us have this kind of roll and we got to treat it twice. Okay. All right. Multiple appointments, but you're getting results each time. And then like you said, at home, you want to be 
exercising and doing your cardio and muscle mass and all of that, because that's going to support your overall wellness. What about dermal fillers? And I, I, I think I even need you to distinguish that between that and Botox, because in my mind, they both just kind of freeze your face. And I'm not quite sure. I really don't know the difference. Clearly, I didn't do enough research because I knew you were going to tell us and that I would be learning along with everyone who gets to watch this live or archive. Right. Okay. So Botox and dermal fillers are two separate things. Okay. So okay. Botox, it is a neurotoxin. Okay. And it's not the same thing we put in bodies for embalming. I know a lot of people say that too. It is a neurotoxin. What it does is it simply relaxes the muscle so that it can't move and make frown lines and wrinkles, et cetera. Okay. Here's the kicker with Botox. I know people are super afraid that you're going to end up looking like Spock or the Catwoman or something like that, right? We've but seen it, it. <laughs> because we've seen it. There are people who don't move. There's a woman on a soap opera. I won't say her name or throw her under the bus, but it's just just like yeah, barely the mouth moving and nobody wants that. Now that's not cute. That might be good on paper. I always say that's that's good on paper, but in real life, it's just a little bit startling. Right. Okay. So that goes to the person who is actually administering your treatment. The person you're going to should be well-versed and educated on anatomy because the needles we use for Botox, you can go just a hair too deep and you miss the muscle and you might get the fibers or you go too oh, deep. Into your okay. That makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, and there's two different ways. You can look natural and just a little bit, or you can be frozen in time. There's a lot of people who like to be frozen in time, but you can overdo it. You should still have movement, right? I have movement, right? You can see you all my expressions. Movement. You have movement. <laughs> Cheeks and movement, Botox. eyebrows. Yeah. I have Botox. I love Botox, but it's all about how you apply uh -huh. it and what you do with it. Okay. That's the key, okay. Okay. So then we have dermal fillers. Now, dermal fillers are not a neurotoxin. It is not going to stop your face from moving. Okay. Fillers are to help contour and replace fat that your body has lost. So okay. over time, we get the sunken eyes here in the eyes. Your mm -hmm. cheeks will start to drop down with age. Okay, this is feeling personal now. <laughs> this well, is hey, starting to feel I, personal. Look, look. <laughs> with age, those things happen. So okay. the person that you are seeing for your derma fillers should be replacing or enhancing what you already have. And if you go to someone who's doing either one, whether it be Botox or dermal fillers, mm -hmm. if your provider or your technician is not telling you no, I'm sorry, you need another person because there is a point where you should say no to your clients. Your clients don't need Botox every month. Botox lasts three to four months. Why are you coming back in sooner than what you need to? You have to have someone who's well-educated and well-versed to tell you you've had enough. I'll see you at the appropriate time. Okay. That's not everyone though, is it? That's, that almost sounds like we're getting into a self-esteem thing if they're coming back that frequently and not needing it. Correct. And that's when you get into the kicker of the person who's treating you. Are they a technician? Are they in healthcare? Because if they're a healthcare worker, we're obligated to report things like that, that we see when our mm -hmm. clients come in. And that's when you would refer them out to counseling and things like that. But if they're just a technician, they don't have that ability to refer them out to a colleague or to someone else that's in the field. Um, but it doesn't mean that you can't, they just need to team up with someone that's in the healthcare field so they have referral basis for their clients. Okay, all right. And, and so you're saying that um, you were talking about the due diligence earlier. So that's where it goes back to you would know beforehand whether or not people had the ability to refer you or prescribe medicine or, or whatever right. what have you okay okay makes sense particularly when you're letting someone inject something into you i want to go back to what you said about the uh neurotoxins and the injections obviously that's something i'm very familiar with uh having been in healthcare and extracting teeth and stuff but the other thing we had to be concerned with um uh, with not placing the needle correctly or the angle of it uh correctly is uh going into a blood vessel can that happen with fillers or with uh, Botox? 
definitely we have something called vascular occlusion with dermal fillers, which is why I say people need to do due diligence because if you are not well versed in the anatomy, you're not going to know where vessels and veins lie. You never know where your fibers and where the muscle starts. So you really, really have to really know your field, craft your field and know what you're doing so that you don't have mishaps. I always like to tell people there is never a bad Botox, Juvo or Zeoman. There's never a bad Restylane or anything like that when it comes to Botox or fillers. What it is, is bad technique and an uneducated person administering the treatment. It's okay. not the product. It's the person using or administrating the product that causes the problems. All right. I appreciate that. We need to take accountability for what we're doing. But yeah. to your point, there's generally a patient side in terms of maintenance or, or care or whatever other instruction. And I, I'm just hanging right here for a little bit because Botox is just the rage right now. There's Botox parties and all types of things going on. And uh, if you guys are learning something, if you're enjoying this, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, share to your page. I think this is great information that a lot of women and men, this is not, it might've been a, a female thing at one point, but I know guys who are getting spray painted and sculpted and, and doing all types of things because they're concerned about their appearance. I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I'll take that over not caring any day, any day. So, uh, I like I like what you're sharing here about these procedures and these uh, processes. Is there anything any any other uh, common misconceptions about Botox, what it can or cannot do that people ask you about? There are several um, myths that are out there. People ask me, well, if I get Botox, am I going to look worse when it wears off? No, you're not. You're going to go back to the way you were. Botox does not cause muscle atrophy, which is where the muscle kind of decays or anything like that. Now, do you lose a little bit of the movement as time goes on? Yes. If you get Botox for 20 years, when you're 90, it's not going to pop back like it was in your 30s. Okay, the elasticity or whatever will kind of be affected too, huh? Okay. Correct. That is correct. Um, the second biggest question I get is, Botox is only for Caucasians. No, I'm sorry. You know, I wasn't going to ask that, but <laughs> that, that, is, that is commonly heard among people of color. Okay. Well, what I will say is when Botox came onto the market and when it really started to pick up steam, right. it just so happens that it was geared towards Caucasians. Why? Because the doctors who were in the trials, you know, we do trials in healthcare, right? right. They were Caucasian and they're majority of their clients were Caucasian women. So the marketing just went towards what the, the test group, that's it. Now, right. if we change the marketing to show more people of color, they would see that it's quite normal. And I will tell you guys out there, there's a lot of us who get Botox. We just don't say it. And I train both on Botox every Saturday and you wouldn't believe how many people of color show up, whether they're African-American, whether they're Latino, whether they're Asian, people of color get treatments. We just don't talk about it and it's okay. So when you say you train, are you training other people to do it yes, on Saturdays? Okay. Okay. Yes, cool. I work with a wonderful PA. Um, and she's up in Prosper, and we train a lot of people throughout Texas. She's wonderful, wonderful lady. I, well, I know it's very popular now, and every time I look up on all, all my timelines, someone's having an event where you can go and get, get different <laughs> procedures done, and so, okay, well, if you guys have any, any questions, any comments, just post them, and we will uh, get Nurse Taylor of Residual <laughs> Health Center in Arlington, Texas to answer your questions, but we're just going to keep popping down our little checklist of the most common body treatments and spa procedures that are trending right now, hashtag lip filler, and learn all we can about how it can be done safely and whether or not it's painful. I've been meaning to ask you so far of the things that we've named, that, that freezing your fat thing, the, the sculpting, that sounded painful. Is that painful? Some well, it's not. Uh, you hesitated. Uh, uh, <laughs> but I have been, I have been told when the skin starts to wake up that it hurts. Um, but when you come and see certain people, we can apply heat to that area. 
with um, an infrared heat lamp so that it doesn't sting as much. It's kind of like your leg going to sleep and it wakes up and it's stinging, tingling all over the gotcha, place. Gotcha. That's what it feels like. Well, that, that's bearable. And, and it's the price price of uh, looking the way you want to, I guess. Goodness knows I've sat in beauty shops for four, five, six, seven hours to get my hair braided. So right? <laughs> I had pain for days. Yes. <laughs> and it's pain and a face clip for days. <laughs> It all comes with a price. And you did mention lip fillers. Lip fillers are the rage. Everyone is trying to get more of that pouty lip. Um, it can be overdone as well. Mm -hmm. You have to remember there's elasticity in the skin. Um, you have to make sure, and I'm not sure if everybody knows this, but there are so many nerve endings around the top of your lip, right. uh, you know, around your vermilion border. You right. want to be very careful. And the needles are going to be so close to veins and things in your lips. So you have to be making sure that the person injecting your lip is doing it correctly. Now, okay. some people have a lip where it folds forward and they just want that lip to be turned up. Guess right. what? You don't have to put filler in there. You can actually put uh, just a little bit of Botox in there to relax how tight this muscle is pulling and it will relax it so that it falls forward where you don't actually need filler. So there's options. You just have to go to someone who's, you know, well-versed and trained in it, but it can be done without the duck lips. And it sounds like too, that if you have a, a practitioner that's really concerned for your overall welfare too, that they're going to tell you about these options and tell you when enough is enough and too much is, let's back this thing up. So uh, that's, that's a lesson learned right there for any type of healthcare because, uh, we hear about some things and they're scary things. And it's a small percentage of providers, whatever industry it is, it's usually a small percentage of people, but they can do some really do some damage. So yeah, absolutely be careful and, and check the places out, check the people out. What about, I'm going to pause on the list here and talk about sanitation for a moment. Cause you're talking about, you know, needles and, and invasive type procedures. <laughs> What type of sanitation practices are done in, in your health center or centers like yours? Okay, well, that's a loaded question. It depends on the facility and how they want to conduct it. So um, here at Residual Health Center, I do have an autoclave for some of my suture. Um, let me see if I have one over here. So for some of the items that I use, like my banded scissors or scissors mm -hmm. I use to remove sutures, um, they're, they are made out of steel and they do get sharpened. So I will clean these and it involves scrubbing with um, disinfectant. You rinse it, you soak it again. We put an autoclave that heats up very, very high to right. sterilize the item. And they're put in little baggies to keep them sterile. If right. you're not going to use an autoclave, which, you know, that's, I guess that's kind of old school. I guess I'm showing my age again. No, not school. necessarily. I see autoclaves <laughs> and they work. That's four tests, they all of that. It works. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Right, um, right, it works. There are a lot of centers that use disposable items, right? And they'll come right. in their own sterile packaging. They open it, it's a one-time use and you throw it away. So you can be old school like me and use autoplay or you can buy everything disposable. Um, one way to ensure safety, I like to open my products in front of the client so that they see it's coming out of a sterile package. If right. I'm using Botox or the fillers, I show them the lot number, I show them the expiration date, and I open everything in front of them. Because, you know, I can really do anything when I turn around, right? Absolutely. You know what I'm doing over there. I like to show that to my clients, let them, you know, know that, hey, my first concern is safety right. for you. So, but it depends on the, the facility. And like I said, disposable or mm -hmm. autoclave. It just depends on the facility. Right. And people should feel comfortable asking about that as well. And I'm just saying that from my own experience and the staff, the team, the provider should be comfortable answering it. They should not get upset. There shouldn't be a problem about that at all. I would consider that a red flag. Even when I go to get a pedicure, I'm asking, you know, <laughs> is right. it sanitized, disinfected, obviously, you know, the little tub there, they can't put in sterilization, but you ought to be able to share your procedures with me, you know, at the chiropractor, wherever. When did you change this little paper? What is, you know, what's really going that's on? Actually, and that's a good tip. Everything should be changed in between clients. You should never be sitting on a pillow or anything like that that has hair on it. Everything should be clean, sprayed mm -hmm. down, wiped with capsaicin, right. disposable sheets, whatever the case may be. And, it, you know, just safety. Would you want to lay on something like that? So why would your client? Exactly. That's exactly. how I see it. 
That's how I see it too. Uh, <laughs> if you're just joining, I'm Dr. Mo Anderson, author, speaker, podcast host, and dentist, licensed active dental surgery. And I am here with the amazing nurse Taylor, who is the owner of Residual Health Center. I almost said it without stuttering that time. <laughs> That's Southern accent is having a hard time with residual, but I, I'm a I'm a trooper. I'm gonna get it out. It's a great name. It's me. It's me. <laughs> I do want to touch back on one thing. Oh, yeah, back sure. The fillers and the Botox. I don't want anyone to think that any of these treatments are permanent. Botox will wear off. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like the fillers or you feel there's too much fillers, fillers can be dissolved. Okay. The center that, that you're going to should have a product in their facility if they're doing dermal fillers to right. where they can dissolve it. And over time, you know, if you've gotten you know, touch-ups here and there, you can wipe the slate clean and dissolve it all and start from scratch. So and it does, positive. whatever is dissolving it doesn't affect the tissue at all. I, I realize this, you know, tissue is different from whatever you're using for the filler, but I would be afraid of that. No? No, no. Actually, it's actually a bio breakdown product. So what yeah. we use to fill you is hyaluronic acid. Right. Hyaluronic acid is produced, a natural enzyme that's produced in the liver and in your gallbladder. It's used to break down and ingest things that are going through your intestine. It's the same chemical. It doesn't break down or, or burn through your intestine. It just attacks the fat. That's all it does. Got and it. when we dissolve it, it's only going to dissolve that product. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Thank you, Onisha Childs, for joining us. She commented, this is very, very informative. Please, uh, guys, we need those hearts and the thumbs up. Hit that button because that feeds us into the algorithm. So, so Facebook will tell more people about this live. And thank you for commenting. And then Sandra Foreman, I can't see all of her comment. I don't know. It says, what is the age you should stop getting about this live? Right. Thank you for commenting. Ooh. And then Sandra Foreman, Me. I turned that off. I was trying to enlarge it so I could read her comment. But Sandra Foreman, if you're still watching, please uh, complete your comment there. I think you hit uh, send a little bit too soon for us, but thanks for joining. Thank you, those who are watching. And feel free to ask questions. Nurse Taylor is here for that purpose, to educate you and me about spa treatments and the latest in body treatments. There we go. Miss Foreman wants to know what is the age you should stop getting Botox? There is no age. You can stop whenever you want. All right. Uh, and that probably goes for all of the treatments we've talked about so far. Or are there some where you should taper off at some point? Well, there are contraindications that you should be aware of with some of the treatments. So depending on what you're coming in for, whether it be fat dissolvers or cavitation, or sometimes even the laser treatments. If you are diabetic, of course, you know, it's gonna have slow healing wounds. Um, if you are taking certain medicines like blood thinners, warfarin, uh, Coumadin, Plavix, um, you have a tendency to bruise or to bleed. Mm -hmm. And that would be an indicator for the dermal fillers. You're gonna bruise and you're gonna bleed more if you are taking blood thinners. Um, guys out there, I wanna make sure you guys understand that ibuprofen, Motrin, Aleve, those are blood thinners, aspirin. If you are taking those things and you want to undergo some kind of uh, cosmetic procedure, you need to stop those ahead of time. And if you're taking those products because of health reasons, you need to discuss it with your PCP before you stop taking such medicine. Right. And that, that goes for any medical procedure. And like you said earlier, to make sure that you're having full disclosure, being open and honest about what's going on. Uh, with you and your health, because people do try to hide things or, you know, not be honest about them, not taking my blood pressure medication or whatever. And that, that can just be a big mistake. And then they want to sue when, you know, you didn't give the person providing the treatment all the information they need. Right. So, yeah, well, well said. What about um, post-op care drain removal? We kind of got into some post-op care earlier, but but the drain removal, I think I saw you do a live video on that. Uh, I did. It looked like it was really helpful, but ooh. <laughs> you know what? That is my favorite part of the day. 
move, removing drains, removing sutures, the stroma fluid that I live for is so right. fun to me. I'm so retarded, but, but <laughs> um, you like what you like. <laughs> so um, post-op care, post-op care is a part of spas. It just depends on if that clinic or facility wants to bring that on. When we're talking about post-op care, what we're talking about is people who have undergone cosmetic surgery, tummy tucks, lipo, BBLs, tummy what tucks. Is that? I, I, is that something we can say? Because I saw that on, on several sites. BBL. BBL. Oh, BBL is Brazilian butt lift. So uh, basically, it's a fat transfer procedure. We lipo you all over the body. Okay. Where there's excess fat. And then the physician, the surgeon, takes that fat, cleans it up, and then places it in your derriere. To make you, it cool around her. How do you clean fat? It's like chitlins. You just put it in a tub. <laughs> I'm asking. I don't know. How do you clean somebody's fat? I'm okay. <laughs> so, That's what came to mind. <laughs> East Texas, <laughs> East Texas, <laughs> family roots. Well, it's, I wouldn't put it equivalent to chitlins, but we filter it. So when they're using their cannula to remove the fat from your body, it goes through a suction canister and it does have like, you know, the little sifter that you have for your flour, right? Okay. So there's a sifter that's inside of that cannula and the good fat stays on top of that filter mm. and then like all the blood and the fluid will sink down that stuff we do not use we want to take the good fat that stayed up into the colander and that's right. what's transferred into the buttocks or to the hips or breast or wherever you're getting it placed and it sounds like they're less likely to be problems with using your own tissue than with injection something artificial and they're like wasn't well, somebody using a tire flat tire <laughs> See, this is why I'm doing this because it's so scary. The stories that go viral are never the good stories about the yeah. happy people who, you know, got their Kim Kardashian booty or whatever. It's always the people who just ended up in pain and misery with a lump and right, right. Yeah. So I I want to make sure people understand having your own fat transferred is the best way to do it. Is there other products that we are using to enhance the buttocks in the breast area. Yes, that product is once again, hyaluronic acid at a different granular grade. So we can buy lip fillers that are super, super thin and they're like, you know, one ml or 20 mLs or 50 mLs. And when you go up in the number, that means the viscosity is thicker and it's right. fuller, right? Okay. okay. What you're talking about, yes, to the true story. I'm not going to name the name, but if we are living in the DFW Metroplex. We all know who that is. Right. Um, and that person was using non-hyaluronic acid products to fill up dairy airs. Do we want to go down that road? No, which is another reason why I'm in this, this area, because I want to make sure that this is accessible to everyone. Okay. Yes. Everybody deserves to feel good and feel great about themselves, but we want to do it safely. Absolutely. And it, and what makes one person feel good and feel great is going to be different from another person. So this is a no judgment zone. Exactly. And just trying to open your mind, expand your boundaries. It might not be you. You may have a friend that's getting these uh, procedures and you can help inform them and help support them on their journey. What about uh, tattoo removal? Now I saw, I think it was Summer Walk. It wasn't Tayana Taylor, but I think it was Summer Walker got Larry tattooed on her face. Somebody, I'm just saying name. I don't know. <laughs> but a, a, a star, a singer who I really like got a name on her face. Yes, because he got Summer and she got Larry. Like it would have been great if his name was Winter or something. I might do that. <laughs> but I don't have enough love in me anywhere. God for you not to put Larry on my face. So <laughs> if anybody knows her, please share this uh, live with her because she's going to need this information we're about to get on tat tattoo removal i'm gonna say in about three to six months but that's just me <laughs> how how does that even work tattoo removal? Well, we actually use a laser at a high frequency to actually remove the pigmentation or to remove the coloring of the tattoo okay. you have to be careful when you're using lasers because some lasers 
are not meant for dark, darker pigmentations of skin, you'll end up with a burn versus oh. the treatment working. Okay. And when I say that it works for blonde or strawberry hair as well, you can't be too fair and too light and you can't be too dark because it'll have the adverse effect. But times have changed. They have really great machines. There is one specific that is made for the very, very fair and darker skin. It's called an NG YAG mm -hmm. laser hair remover machine. And that machine is used for darker pigmentations and lighter pigmentation, where you can use it and safely remove the pigmentation from people. Um, the black color ink is the easiest to remove. Um, it has let least treatments. When you get into the reds and the yellows, you will need more time and more treatments to remove that color. For some reason, it stains a lot longer than the black ink does, but it's absolutely possible to remove it. You know, we were all young and crazy in our teens and 20s and we got tattoos and you get to be, you know, working and kids and you're like, mommy, why do you have that on you? Dad, why do you? Well, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to jump in because I've had my tattoo for 30 years and it's great and it's not going anywhere. I think what? the younger crazy tattoos were the young were the ones where at the time they felt like G to you, but now as you're older, it, it might be a little more racy or risque. Cause my tattoo is, is some Native American art. So mm -hmm. at the most I get asked, you know, when did you get that? And when I tell them, I was like, yeah, before tattoos were really cool. I got my I, I was a, a trendsetter, but I, you know, the name or the eggs or the, you know skull and daggers or whatever I, i've heard a few people say they regret those and it's nice that now you don't have to cover them up right with an even bigger tattoo correct now you can get it get it safely removed and do whatever you want to but yeah i we you know i have adult children as well like you do and they sure will ask you about yourself and you can't, they are not trying to hear i was young and foolish <laughs> at all hey thanks for joining marisha johns and we have another question for you from marisha she wants to know what beauty products do you recommend nurse taylor for firming up the face okay so the best product i would use for firming up the face would be collagen believe it or not Collagen is what promotes okay. the structure in the skin and promotes elasticity. So I wouldn't say a makeup product. I would say a product that's well-based in collagen. And I wouldn't even use a makeup product, to be honest. What I would do is do a supplement of collagen. You can put them in your smoothie. You can take the supplement pills. And you can actually get collagen in the cream form and apply it to your skin. Um, I do want to make sure that you guys understand when you're using collagen or retinol to repair your skin, you have to use that in conjunction with SPF, okay? Because if you don't, what will happen is you'll get over-processing and it'll do the opposite effect to your skin. So even with the SPF or without, should you avoid just in general, and this just makes me think about sun exposure and the damage from that, uh, I think you guys recommend that people always use SPF anyway, but you're saying particularly in combination with that product, which I don't see them advertising when they're talking about these collagen products. That's that's a good tip. Yeah, unfortunately, they don't always, you know, advertise what should be there. But um, if you look on some of the products, the collagen products, it'll say in very small print, it'll have SPF in there. And even like our makeup has SPF in there. It doesn't advertise it, but it's in there if you just look on yeah. the bottom. Yeah, in very fine print, which again, you know, if it's not a 10 font or above 12, I can't see it. So it might as well not be on there because I'm trying to look cute. I don't have my glasses off. Just a couple of more procedures I want to walk through. And then, guys, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, this is Nurse Taylor. She has two decades of healthcare experience from the emergency room to cardiac care. And now she is doing, she has her own business doing um, wellness and spa treatments and Botox and all of the latest beauty trends, doing it safely and with uh, good infection control, it sounds like. Sauna detox. I'm thinking this is something I might need. You know, I take the oral chemo daily for my condition. I don't know about the sauna part, but I know I've been recommended detox. So I'm, I'm very interested in what that's about. Okay, so there's different variations of a detox. Mm -hmm. You can do an oral detox and here at Residual Health Center and other 
facilities, they have what we call a tea detox. I know right now it's really popular, uh, Keisha Dior or Kaor. Right. She has a really great detox tea that everybody's raving about. You guys, mm -hmm. detoxing is really great for your skin. You got to remember, there's very few pure products that are out here, right? There is fillers and, and um, other things that are in the products, right? Preservatives, right. Correct. And whatever our body can't break down naturally, and when I say break down naturally, if it's something foreign in your body, your body doesn't know what a preservative is, right? So right. is it going to break it down? No, it's going to store it in your fat cells, guys. So anything that's not natural, that your body doesn't know how to use, it's going to store it till later, right? We're going to hibernate with it. So the great thing about a detox, whether it's internal or external, is that it's going to help get those toxins out of the body and it gets it out by sweat. That is what a sauna detox is. You ah. can wrap yourself in herbs or oils and then wrap yourself with cloths or ace bandages, or you can get into the bag or the chair as you are. We zip you in. The only thing that's coming out is your little hands and your, and your head and everything goes in there and we kind of heat you up. A good temperature is anywhere between 86 and 96 and you just stay in there about 30 minutes to an hour. It's tolerable. You know, it gets a little steamy in there, but it is tolerable. Okay, we broke up a little bit when you were saying the time. Did you say 500 minutes to an hour? How long did you say? <laughs> 30, 30, 30 minutes to an hour. Oh, I was like, I don't have that kind of time. I got something to do. I can't be in that 500 minutes. And most people really love the 30 minute session because it's something they can do in a small amount of time. You know? Right. I get the principle. I like to go over to the couple of large spas over in Dallas where you can go in rooms with different temperatures, but I just hadn't really put it together in terms of detox. It was just very relaxing to me and I felt good and energized after yeah. doing that. But that makes a lot of sense. And also suddenly hot yoga makes sense to me. I just thought that was the most ridiculous thing on earth to do. Wait, I mean, it's boring and hot. This way. <laughs> every nightmare but now I can see where indeed that's beneficial and meditative so my yes. apologies about having bad thoughts about all of that I've changed I've grown right here today okay all right I've grown as a person and let's go with supplements what types of we've talked about the tea are there any supplements particularly with the stress and I've just read an article in uh, Parade Magazine about women in particular drinking more and uh, it's causing our blood pressure to go up since 2020 because of, you know, constantly being barraged with all the toxic things going on in the world. What, what are some supplements that, if any, that you'd recommend? Well, supplements, once again, you're going to have to check with your physician first if you're taking any prescription. Disclaimer. Disclaimer, because I want people to understand that over-the-counter vitamins and supplements, some do have interference with prescription medications. So you have to make sure you check with your doctor. But some of the great um, supplements that I would recommend, especially for women who are coming up in age, is black cohosh. It's a great uh, hormone balancer. I am a big fan of black cohosh. Um, even for us that are in our 30s and 40s and you kind of feel in those days, give you a little black cohosh and add that to your diet. It's really great. Um, fish oil, fish oil and omega-3s, those are perfect mm -hmm. to help with circulation and support in your body. And my biggest fan, my biggest cocktail guys that I would say for herbal supplement that's overall health. These are key guys, vitamin C, mm -hmm. D3, zinc, magnesium, and elderberry. I love those supplements because it's an immune support, and immune booster. It's great for all seasons, whether you're going into the winter, going into spring, and you can even add some joint support on there too. And they have memory support, all kinds of things, but they you do. just want to make sure whatever you're picking, um, it's what you're benefiting. But I want people to understand that just because you're taking supplements does not mean you're going to get the desired effect. Right. And what I mean by that is people come in here all the time and they ask for B12. B12 mm -hmm. is going to give me energy. I'm so tired. B12, B12, B12. Mm -hmm. Your body may not be deficient in B12. And I could pump as much B12 into you. It's not going to fix the issue. Right. right. So there are things that we can do to figure out 
what you're depleted in. We can do a hair analysis test. We can do something as simple as a urinalysis to kind of see what minerals you're lacking. And from that, we can pick what minerals and vitamins will be great for you to help correct what you're feeling. So kind of a customized approach instead of just taking a big handful of stuff that's just going back down, back down the toilet because they're you know, water soluble and fat soluble vitamins too. And, and that's the other thing, even with those to make sure you're following, taking them as directed and not yeah. just deciding if one made me feel good too, it's gonna make me feel real good. <laughs> real good, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Well, are there any more questions, folks watching? This is your opportunity before we lose wonderful nurse Taylor here. and this wealth of information from the medical side. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll ask her. Nurse Taylor, are there any other services that are offered by you or similar types of businesses that uh, you, you wanna share something with us about that little known facts? Well, I do wanna to touch back on post-op care. So okay. there are a lot of facilities here in the Metroplex that offer post-op care. Um, but what I'm finding is people are confusing post-op care with massage therapy after their surgeries, right? Absolutely. And that is MLD, massage lymphatic drainage, right? So I want people to understand that a massage and your post-op care are two different things. Post-op care consists of us assessing your wounds, making sure that you are hydrated and your electrolytes are balanced, being able to give and deliver a report to your physician if needed. And you need to make sure that the person can be able to take out the wonderful drains that I like to remove on camera and to remove fluid. So those things are post-op care. Massaging your body, getting your lymphatic system to wake up, that is a massage. It's not post-op care, it's a massage, that's what it is. And there's nothing wrong with having someone to take out your sutures and your drain and having someone else do your massages. But I wanna make sure people understand that those are two different things, completely okay. different things. But um, no matter where you go, guys, I think everyone needs and deserves a little R&R &R to help you relax, oh, and whether it's something as simple as a basic facial or a full body massage or putting you in the sauna detox or removing an old name from back from 1999, whatever it is. Larry, like Larry. Yeah, Larry. <laughs> Whatever the case is, regardless of the facility you choose, you should go in there, you should feel relaxed, you should be able to have candid conversations with your technician or your provider. It should be an overall good experience. And when you leave, you're gonna be like, oh, I feel good. So wherever you go, you should have that feeling. And, and again, that was part of the wonderful five-star reviews that I saw on your page was as much as the services people talked about how they felt when they left. and and really for me, if I'm going anywhere called holistic or spa or wellness, I feel like I should feel good when I leave. Like that's, that's just part of it. So I'm glad you made that point. Onisha, I think you answered her question, but she's asking, do you recommend B12? Now you said that you may not necessarily get the result that you thought you were going to get because you saw a commercial or whatever. But I guess she's asking in general, do you recommend B12? Or if you want to revisit that about checking your blood levels and so forth. I do recommend B12. I think but B12 is a wonderful product. Um, in conjunction with fatigue and tiredness, I get a lot of clients who are anemic and they think B12 is gonna fix the problem. The reason why you're anemic is because you have decreased red blood cells, right? We need to increase that. And B12 is not gonna do that. It's not gonna help produce more red blood cells. Um, so like I said, you really should be going to someone who can look at you as a whole. We can do blood tests and that, a hair analysis, urinalysis to make sure that whatever supplement we're giving you is going to benefit what's going on and help correct the issue. B12 is wonderful as an overall supplement. It absolutely is. But does everybody need B12? No, everybody doesn't need B12. I think, Sorry. <laughs> I think I, you, you've referenced people's uh, physicians a few times, and I think I know the answer to this question, but it, it begs asking if you see someone and, and you've done some tests or through the health history, you know, something's concerning, do you refer them to their physician or have you had to refer anyone to an emergency room? Because sometimes we, you know, try to seek care on our own and not go see a, a physician. Correct. 
So my favorite line is, please don't Google, please don't forum, <laughs> ask for help, okay? Because <laughs> this internet- I'll go to I Dr. Google, don't go to Dr. Online, Google, right? Google and read blogs, <laughs> and read blogs, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I have not had to refer anyone myself to the ER, uh, mainly because I am very nitpicky on the care that I provide my clients when they come through the door. Um, but here at Residual Health Center, I have a PA, I have a doctor on, on duty. So mm -hmm. if, I, if it is something that is going on that I think needs to be seen by someone senior than me, then definitely I can call on them. Uh, and there are a lot of spas in the Metroplex that have off-site medical directors or nurse practitioners that they can call or FaceTime. And of course, if there's ever an emergency, then definitely yes, refer the client to um, the ER. Uh, but if they're coming to you as a spa, there really isn't anything besides the post-op care that would really be significant. Because if you're doing something that's in your scope, there right. should be no emergencies, right? There we go. There we go. If you're following the rules and, and pra practicing ethically, yes. that you know, should not be a problem. Great point. Great point. Um, what about, I think we'll end on this unless someone posts another comment. So many people are just stressed out now for previously mentioned, you know, we've got to we still have a pandemic going on with the new variant coming up, there's still financial stress, relationship stress, just, you know, neighbor's dog barking, whatever is bothering you. What in terms of just mindfulness practices do you employ to get some balance into your life beyond the services? What are broader things that you recommend? Like I like to walk and, and read, you know, I love, love reading. And uh, there's this wonderful 4K channel on uh, YouTube that you can just watch them in the Maldives or the Caribbean or whatever, this drone video. So those those are just a, you know, I kind of sprung that question on you, but to put out there something, I can just sit and watch that like I'm watching a fireplace and it just calms me. I can feel my blood pressure go down. What are some practices you, you try to keep yourself centered? Well, to keep myself, believe it or not, meditation works really well for me. Um, I'm not going to kid you when I thought it was all a joke. Meditation. I'm like, ah, meditation, ah, yoga. <laughs> right. How do you that? get that? I don't know about that? But, you know, I, I will say as the years have gone over and my PCP actually, you know, I, like you said in the beginning, I do a lot, right? I'm always ripping and running. I have a lot on my plate. And my PCP, I'm very candid. I'm probably a little bit too candid because he's like, oh, I love it when you come in because you're just, you're so special. And I am, I'm so special. <laughs> but, you know, he was like, you need to learn how to just breathe. For all of us who have this wonderful eye watch on your wrist, there's a setting where it tells you to breathe. You can set it for every 30 minutes, once an hour. But I really love to just concentrate on my breathing and play meditation music. It can be the rainforest or trees in the wind, or believe it or not, there's this high pitch sound. It's 452 Hertz. And it's like a de-stressor, like it's just a buzz. But when you concentrate on your breathing and you hear that buzz and you just silence and you're, we, as women, we carry our attention in our shoulders. And if you yes. notice, you're be sitting like this, yes. And with that tone, you just, just relax. Wow. So it's and like it, a it white noise. Me, it works, yes, yeah, kind of like white noise. It really works for me. It may not work for others, but it has really helped me through some times, guys. So whether it's listening to music or just being somewhere quiet to yourself or looking up at the sky, I think everyone needs to find a, an item or a thing that can kind of help them just stop, mm -hmm. slow down, and focus on themselves. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, tell folks how to reach you. I'm going to type it into the comments as you tell us here, your website okay. and Facebook, social media, however. How do we how do we get in touch with you okay. after this end? So Residual Health Center, I am located on Facebook. I am located on Instagram. Um, you can reach me on my website at residualhealthcenter.square.site. You can call me here at my office at 817-476-6200. You can text me at 
888-382-0596, or you can email me at residualhealthcenter at gmail.com. As you see, everything is what? Residual Health Center. I love center. it. Love uh, it. Love and I'm available, regardless of whether or not you come to my center or not, I'm all about patient care and making sure you get the best. So if you you know, need help finding someone, guys, I have colleagues all over the place. I will definitely help you find somewhere that you can go closer to home. Um, just let me know, ask your questions, whatever it is. I don't care. I will answer them. You are. And, and I know that for a fact that you're not just saying that, that you really are, you have a huge network and you really are great about connecting people. And at the end of the day, you just want them to be better. And we share that as well. So I hope that the information you've gotten here today has made you more knowledgeable and better and better able to assess your options, as well as uh, choose some really fun spa treatments mm -hmm. at places like Residual Health Center in Arlington, Texas. Thank you, Nurse Taylor. It's a pleasure having you on the show and learning from your vast vault of knowledge. Well, thank you, Dr. Anderson, for having me on. And we'll, we'll have you back again. They'll have some more treatments out and, and you can share your expertise on that as well. You guys support Residual Health Center in Arlington, Texas. And thanks again, Nurse Taylor. Happy holidays to you all. Thank you, guys. Happy holidays. <laughs>